We are going to build a navigation bar that fits any device using techniques found in the very core of HTML and CSS. But why do we build responsive websites? And more specifically, why do we build responsive navigation bars? To answer these questions, we need to dig into what a navigation bar is and how people use a website. When a person Googles something that makes your website pop up in the search results and you are lucky enough that they actually click your link, they will be redirected to your space, your presence on the internet. Internet. The most common landing pages have a giant text which the visitor will read first, and then a smaller text, and then a button, also known as the call to action. But when they have done all of that, what is next? Well, now the visitor decides if they A will leave the website, or B will dive deeper into the information on the website. If you get visitors that choose alternative B, then great. That means you have someone interested in what you're offering. Whether it's a personal portfolio website or a service you're building, that's awesome. So now they want to find out more, and this is where our navigation bar comes in handy. To let the user navigate our website and visit the different pages of information you have to offer. So a navigation bar is great for navigating around my website, you say. But why on earth do I need a responsive navigation bar? Well, did you know that already back in 2016, people browsing the web on mobile devices surpassed the amount of people browsing the web on desktop computers? Which means it's a bigger chance a person on a mobile phone stumbles into your website than a person on a desktop computer. And a website made for desktops is usually not very easy to view on a mobile phone. So to make it usable on a mobile device, we need to change the appearance so that people can visit on any screen size. This is what it means to make something responsive. Great, but this poses the question, how do we actually build something responsive? Well, we open our toolbox and there we have it. Media queries. A media query consists of a type, conditions which can be split into features and values, and the CSS rules that are applied if those conditions are true. Let's look at each part a bit deeper. At media. This is the key component that starts the media query. It tells the browser that the following rules should only be applied under certain conditions related to the device's characteristics. Type. This specifies the type of media or device the styles should apply to. Common types include screen for computer screens, tablets, smartphones, etc. Print for printers and all for all media types. In our example we used screen focusing on devices with screens. And this is a logical operator used to combine multiple queries or conditions. It's like saying and also these conditions must be true. Feature and value. This is the condition that must be met for the CSS rules to apply. Features can be things like width, height, orientation, and resolution. The value is what you're testing against, like a specific pixel width. There are two types of conditions. Min feature, the minimum value for a feature. For example, min width, 601 pixels, means apply these styles for any device with a screen width of 601 pixels or wider. Max feature, the maximum value for a feature. For example, max width 600 pixels means apply these styles for any device with a screen width of 600 pixels or narrower. And CSS rules go here. Inside the curly braces, you write the CSS rules that will be applied when the media query conditions are met. These rules will override the default styles in the context of the conditions specified by the media query. All right, let's take this knowledge and see if we can build a navigation bar that works just as well on a desktop as a mobile device. I have started a website here. It's brilliant, I know. But there's something missing. A beautiful navigation bar? Am I right? Let's start by adding a CSS file for just the navigation so we keep our CSS files clean. First, let's add a nav tag, which is like a renamed div tag, but with the purpose of having navigational elements inside. Let's add an image for big screens and one for smaller screens using media queries to only show the one that fits the screen best. We also need some links. Let's create a few and put them in a div tag with a class links so that we can lump them together and make the links black and remove the underline. Now, if we add a max width, width and a margin auto, we can center the navbar. Let's also add height, padding and flex for the navbar to push the logo and the links to different sides of the navbar. Amazing. However, 
it still looks like on mobile. Let's fix that. We will do it the easy way and just hide the desktop stuff on small screens and vice versa make a mobile specific navigation that hides when we're on big screens. Since we can't really fit all the links in the navigation, let's use a drawer which overlays the entire website and makes it easy for the mobile user to see the links. Let's use a checkbox to toggle between the open and closed state. But instead of this ugly checkbox, we can dress it up with a hamburger icon or a menu icon. We add a div with a class menu, which we can open and close based on the state of the checkbox using some fancy CSS magic. Or more specifically, a sibling selector that displays the menu if the checkbox is checked. Center the links and make them a bit thicker. I also like to do something weird with my designs, so let's grab the duck from the logo and put it to the left of the page we're on using a class, which we will assign the active page. Let's try it out. Awesome. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Thanks, bye.